We have to look very closely at the relationship between China and the US as well as Taiwan. Between these three countries, we could very well have a new world war. Why is that the case? I'm going to bring it to you today. This is extremely serious information. In fact, the first thing we're going to look at is the chips, talking about semiconductors. And then we'll also look at the currency wars that are going on. These are two connected issues. The second thing is the inflationary factors and how China opening up could result in the Federal Reserve needing to increase interest rates even further. I'm going to bring all of that to you today. Let's begin. This is going to be a jam-packed, fast-paced episode, so stick with me. U.S. poised for Dutch and Japanese help on China chip crackdown. This is important because we have seen, as I've shown you in previous videos, and you probably are already aware, that you look at uh, China and their dominance as it relates to technology. They've been adding more. They've been doing their best to try and grow faster than the United States. And it is important to note that their relationship with Taiwan is something that is going to be integral to that growth. The same thing with the United States. They both need Taiwan. They need the manufacturing, but they also need uh, all of the, you know, the TSMC, the biggest company producing that, but they do that production in different places, one of them being in China. And this is really key right now today to watch how they're responding to it. Other countries are starting to come in and saying, you know what? We don't like the idea of China expanding, of China having all access to all of these uh, you know, new technologies. Their national security is a risk to us. So yeah, we're going to step in right here. The United States has specifically said we do not want companies to sell semiconductors or their technology to uh, China. Think about that. Think about what that signals. That is, in my opinion, that is a provocation for war because you're basically saying we're not allowed to grow because you don't like what we're doing. This is huge. This is massive. And so they're both sides are doing kind of the same thing. But now what we're looking at is the Dutch and Japanese stepping in and saying we are on your side, United States. This is just a video that goes along with that saying the Netherlands and Japan home to key suppliers of semiconductor manufacturing equipment are close to joining the US administration led effort to restrict exports of the technology to China and hobble its push into the chips industry. So China's trying to do it themselves. They're trying to do away with TSMC. They're going about this along with the currencies, along with the BRICS nations, along with setting up the AAIB, you know, the, all these different institutions, uh, supranational entities that China has been spearheading in order to get off of the U.S. control. Isn't that interesting? But you look at it, look at the details, look at the data. Okay, let's not get swept up in the, the politics side of it. Taiwan is still semiconductor leader as chip exports rise again. So Taiwan has this down path. They are the number one in this category. But something's got to change here because this is really building up. You look at what's happening and chips, semiconductors are in everything. War will be fought over semiconductors if it gets there. Hopefully it doesn't. Hopefully this will never happen. China cannot be out. China must be in. France says it's diverging with Washington on Beijing ties. Do you see what's happening here? You look at this for all of Europe, basically. Europe is going down. I'm sorry to my friends in Europe, but this is the way it goes. The economies are just being dragged down. You look at the birth rates, you look at what's going on like economically down in the horizon, it's all bad. I mean, they cannot fix the situation. They have to have ties to China or they are out of commission entirely. So right now here today, we are seeing this and that is this division where Europe is kind of in between and saying, well, we're really good partners with the US, don't worry, we're friends, but we can't be not nice to China. Please don't do that to us. This is happening right now, right now today. China is setting a new world energy order. Beijing's cooperation with the Gulf states marks the emergence of the petro yuan. 
This is so huge, okay? Zoltan talking about this, and for people uh, who had seen previous videos I talked about around this subject, you gotta pay attention, because essentially what's going on here is Saudi Arabia saying, you know what, maybe we will actually uh, kind of have ties to China, and maybe we will sell oil in something other than US dollars. I think that's a good idea, that's what they're saying. Okay, and I think I might have that article in here. But what we're looking at is basically this emergence of factions that are clearly formed. You've got China trying to build new alliances, and then you've got the US basically saying, no, 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 nobody's gonna take us from the top spot. And that ultimately leads to war. That's what we need to realize. Semiconductors are important in relation to tensions between China and Taiwan because they are used in a wide range of technology products from smartphones to military equipment. China is a major consumer of semiconductors and relies heavily on imports, while Taiwan is a major producer of semiconductors. As such, control over the semiconductor industry has become a key point of tension between the two countries. This impacts the US because it is also a major producer of semiconductors and has close economic and political ties with Taiwan. The US has been concerned about China's efforts to gain control over the semiconductor industry and has taken steps to support Taiwan's semiconductor industry, including through investment investment and trade agreements. In terms of national security, the US is concerned that China's control over the semiconductor industry could give it an advantage in the development of advanced technology, including military. This could threaten the US's military and economic dominance in the region. As such, the US has taken steps to strengthen its alliances with countries in the region, including Taiwan, to counterbalance China's influence. That brings me to this. China's recovery may mean that the Fed will have to hike rates longer. Why is that the case? China is reopening at this time. Of course, they have their New Year's, which basically means everything's shut down. Now, during that period, and along with, if you look back in the last three years, there has been virtually, uh, not no activity, but significantly less activity than there was in the years prior to it. So now that is pent up if they're let to be able to go out, to travel, to spend. This is all going to make its way back into the economy of China. And of course, you look at that inflation and it makes its way around the world as well. A lot of spending will take place as people from China start to go out spending their money in other places. Investments. Think, think about that as well. Many people hadn't been able to get out to these different places, uh, whether it's on, let's say, uh, the west coast of the United States or Canada buying up real estate, now that might increase. We will see if foreign buyers start to purchase in these areas once again. A stronger China increases the chance of stubbornly hawkish Fed. As well as the St. Louis Fed President James Bullard said that reopening China makes him nervous that it will lead to upward pressure on inflation. This is not the only place China's reopening is good news for growth, but could be inflationary, economists warn at Davos. Same situation, same facts. We look at this right now today, and it's important because we were told, yeah, around that 5% on the Fed funds rate would be enough, but now China's reopening. I kind of think of it um, kind of perfect timing for China, everything that they've done from 2020. It's kind of a little bit unusual to say the least, IEA sees global oil demand hitting a record high in 2023. Along with that, certainly China, and they mentioned that in the second point, China would drive nearly half of global demand growth. Incredible. We'll see though, if that actually happens. Top Chinese oil traders buying spree sparks market curiosity. And the suggestion here is, are they anticipating needing a lot of it? They'll refine it. They'll put that in with their country as they require this. I, I don't know what's happening at this point, but I'm just showing you. The suggestion is that they need a lot of energy in the coming months. BHP sees China opening boost as iron ore output hits record. Forecast China to produce more than 1 billion tons of steel. They're going to build more buildings. They're going to build more real estate. It doesn't matter how many empty homes there are right now. They are going to build more. The objective of China is to build. It is to get into 
you know, new prosperity that wasn't there many decades ago. And that is by getting people out of the rural areas into the cities. They are just going for that. Prosperity is what they want. And they say shared prosperity as well. We'll see if that in fact occurs. This is basically just several charts. I won't have time to get into all of them, but the fact is China's reopening trade is on. You can look at uh, basically the GDP stats that they show us. There is still growth, believe it or not. Retail sales uh, had been weak. The expectation is that over the last little while, um, they had been down because of people staying home. However, those people are planning on getting on and out and will be spending more. We'll, we'll look at that data in the coming months. This reopening trade is really important for inflation in the United States, inflation in Europe and other places. Okay, so keep an eye on that. Foreigners return to China blue chips as stocks near bull market. In fact, so much that the Bank of America survey I saw last said that um, the actual China trade is now the most overcrowded trade. I, I talked about this before, uh, showing you countless uh, indications that China was oversold, at least in the near term. So anybody who, who was taking that info and trading on it, good, good stuff. China's estimated US portfolio, look at the peak there in around, uh, let's say 2013, all of that equities corporate bonds everything everything down 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 over the last while okay over the last several years that has been declining they clearly are going in a different direction uh there was a surge there for for many years in fact but that ha trend has changed and they are trying to over slowly very slowly over a period of time letting go of their u.s treasuries and uh what seems like the currency in general china trounces the u.s in ai research output and quality. Tencent, Alibaba, Huawei among the top 10 companies. This is important because this is of course the future of technology, artificial intelligence and everything. You're going to wake up in the morning and your breakfast is going to be all ready and made by robots who knew just what you wanted because of the way you slept last night or didn't sleep last night and all kinds of things that uh, will be very unusual but uh, this is the way it goes this is the world we live in today i think it's really important really really important to see it all as we move through this, this time it's, it's a confusing time it's an interesting time but it will be one in which for most people if we don't pay attention closely we're going to be sideswiped and sidelined by it what's happening right now with china Taiwan and the US should be front and center. Look at the semiconductors. Keep your eye on that. Very important. Look at what happened with 2020 when everything was disrupted. Well, what happened with semiconductors immediately caused a shockwave through the system. They are very important. Still today, a lot of cars don't have the right semiconductors. So the cars are just sitting on the lots, done, but waiting for those chips. This is extremely, extremely integral to the national security as well. They love to create uh, the military, loves you know doing what they do. Semiconductors, obviously, extremely important there as well. This is one very key point. We do not want to see more war, but of course, this is one that they'll fight over. Did you find this video informative? If you did, hit that subscribe button down below each and every day. I bring you the latest and greatest data. I'll see you tomorrow.